Hey, what is up guys, it's Stan here. So if you clicked on this video, most likely you're in the market to either purchase one of these new cameras or you've got your hands on a relatively new camera that has a CF Express slot. Uh, these cameras, this camera specifically, this is the Canon R5 mirrorless camera, uses CF Express memory cards like this one I'm holding right here. This is the ProGrade 256 uh, CF Express card that I purchased for the R5. Now we'll take a look at the performance of this card uh, and talk about whether or not you should buy this specific CF Express card if you've got a R5 or similar camera. So let's get into it. CF Express cards like this one, not to be confused with XQD cards, which are also very similar in form factor, have been around for about two, three years now. But they haven't been really popular in cameras or cinema gear until recently. The reason why is because these cards are designed for very high reading and writing bandwidth needs. Uh, up until now, there just hasn't been needs for that because you know UHS-2 SD cards are pretty good for most uses. It's only when you start shooting high refresh rate 4K, or in this case, the 8K, that internal recording is when you run into trouble and you need something like this. CF Express cards come in multiple sizes. You have the Type A, which is a small card, the Type B, which is this one right here, and Type C, which is a very large, large capacity card. Uh, most of the time when people talk about CF Express cards, they're referring to the Type B. Now, uh, there are a couple cameras on the market now, the, especially the A7S III that just came out that used the Type A card. Uh, almost all the, of the other cameras are using Type B cards. Now let's talk about the specs of this card. This card has a maximum read speed of 1,700 megabytes per second read and a maximum write speed of 1,400 megabytes per second write. It also has a sustained minimum write speed of 300 megabytes per second. So the reality of the performance is actually somewhere in between. Now, don't get this confused with the first generation Pro Grade card, which is actually rated for 1600 megabytes per second write. This is the second generation. Also, this is a CF Express card reader. This is uh, something I purchased to be able to connect the cards to the computer. This has a USB Type-C connector to a USB Type-C connector or Type-A if you need. Uh, and I think it's a USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is good for 10 gigabits per second or about, I think it's like 1,200 theoretical megabytes per second. Now, if I plug this into the card reader and do a benchmark test here, I've got AJA Systems Test Lite fired up. And as you can see here, I've got the resolution of 4K with a 16 gigabyte test file in the codec, uh, in the 10 bit RGB codec. And of course, it's pointed towards the CF Express card as the targeted disk. The write speeds is going to hover right around 900 or so megabytes per second write, and read speeds in the 700 to 800 megabytes per second range. Now, this is actually pretty decent of speeds. Um, you know, when they advertise a 1700 megabytes per second and 1400 megabytes per second, normally these cards never truly run at those speeds or sustained. So seeing a 900 megabytes per second write and you know, 720 megabytes per second read here, and it's just going and going and going, that's actually not too bad. If you compare this card with some of the other benchmarks found online, you'll see that this CF Express card falls kind of in line with most of the other uh, benchmarks that you'll find either from SanDisk or from Sony or uh, you know, from the various manufacturers of these CF Express Type B cards. Now, 700 to 800 megabytes per second read and write is all well and good, but the real question is how well does it perform in an actual camera such as the Canon R5? Now, this is where this card's downsides begins to show itself. But first, the pros. In all 
photo still modes, you're able to basically outrun the entire buffer. All right, so shooting raw with the electronic shutter here, uh, we have a buffer of 45 frames and 3,512 shots left. And if I just hold it down here, we can see that that's how many shots we get. And then the buffer refills. So the card is quite quick, especially shooting at 45 megapixels uh, in RAW. Now, as for video modes, this card is able to handle all video modes except 8K RAW. Uh, it's able to handle 8K all I, 8K IPB, but when you start throwing 8K raw at this card, you start getting, uh, you start loading up the buffer, and within a couple minutes, you're overrunning the buffer and it stops shooting. So let's talk about 8K raw. The 8K raw codec in this camera is approximately 2600 megabits per second, or roughly translated about 325 megabytes per second. Now, if you recall, the CF Express card, the 256 gigabyte version, has a minimum write speed of 300 megabytes per second. Now, that's about a 25 megabytes per second shortfall. Unfortunately, it seems as if it's just not enough to keep up with a K raw recording in this camera. Now, in the 512 uh, gigabyte version of the card, it has a minimum write speed of 400 megabytes per second. So my guess is that card should be able to handle the a K raw recording in this card. Also, the 128 gigabyte version has a minimum write speed of 140 megabytes per second. So significantly lower than the 256 or 512 version. So just be aware of that. Now, Prograde also has a higher end version, Cobalt cards, uh, they in the capacity of 325 gigabytes and 650 gigabytes. They're significantly more expensive, but they also have a significantly higher write speed, uh, actual minimum sustained write speed. So uh, those cards are gonna be better for your 4K, or sorry, 8K raw recording. Now, should you buy this card for the EOS R? Well, it all comes down to, is 8K raw recording important to you? If it is, then you have to either settle for most likely the 512 version or a Cobalt card, the 325 or 650 card, gigabyte card, and do, uh, do shooting that way. If not though, this camera is compatible with, or this card is compatible with everything else this camera can throw at it and the price right around $299 at the time of filming is pretty good. So it really comes down to cost versus performance. If you're looking for all the features, being able to record everything and have a big capacity, then you have to either pick up the 512 or the 650 gigabyte version. Uh, if not, the 256 is plenty for most things. It's also important to note that 8K RAW will take up a huge amount of capacity. At 256 gigabytes, I was only rated for about 12 minutes worth of footage. Now, uh, if you're really intent on shooting 8K RAW, that 512 or 650 gigabyte card was, is probably more useful for you just because of the higher capacity and being able to write faster. So hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of the performance of the ProGrade card. I know when I was looking around, shopping around, I couldn't find much benchmarks of this card, especially relative to the R5. I'll make sure to link in the description down below this card along with the card reader and perhaps a couple better alternatives, uh, CF Express cards for this R5 camera. So if this video was useful for you guys, if you can hit that like button, that'd be great. And perhaps comment down below on your experiences with CF Express cards with the R5 system. I'll catch you guys in the next one.